So, Sarah, in the uh, last segment, you basically walked us through uh, the more or less the TikTok that um, I believe was and there was a lot of credit for, uh, you know, the Democratic politicians holding uh, the caucus together, not caving on the um, on the government shutdown. But when uh, you issued a press release basically saying on that Friday as the head of the uh, flight attendants uh, union, uh, Mitch McConnell, I hope you can hear us now. Something to that effect. I'm paraphrasing. Do we have your attention now? <laughs> Do we have your attention now? Um, and uh, you did. And uh, quickly, uh, things turned around. The government uh, reopened. And when uh, I think there were threats coming from uh, Donald Trump and the Republican Party to shut it down again, uh, you folks were out there again saying we are prepared not to uh, waste any time this time around. So let me ask you this in that context. Um, do you sense, I mean, you know, this, your, uh, union's, uh, action, uh, comes in the wake of a lot of strikes that have been happening in the, uh, education sector. We have seen, uh, teachers unions and teachers associations, uh, flex the, the muscle of labor in this country in a way we haven't seen, I think it really, I mean, in such a, a broad way, uh, in, in decades, uh, I've had the opportunity to talk to teachers uh, union heads who all told me to a person, we're going to use this power more. We didn't realize really in many respects that we had it and uh, we were too we, we left this power too dormant. Do you have a sense that there's something changing in the way that labor perceives itself in this country? <laughs> well, I, I think whether labor gets it or not. Um, the average American has had enough. The rubber grand band is breaking all over the country. And you take those teacher strikes, for example. You know, those, the teachers have the support of their entire communities. That's because everything centers around, around education. If there's not good education in the, your school district, the businesses that are, we're trying to attract to that area are not going to want to come because they are going to do an assessment of whether or not the employees that they have can put their kids into good schools. Everything is connected. And what we're starting to see is that there is a commonality in the experience of the American worker, whether it is a public or private job. Uh, pensions have been uh, gutted, um, and there is a continued attack on the remaining at- at pensions. Uh, there has been more and more move to Wall Street. Instead of reinvesting in companies and uh, working for the good of those companies to succeed and sharing in the success with the employees, more and more is given in stock buybacks to Wall Street um, and in executive bonuses. And this is the same this is the same narrative happening across the country. Uh, you see that uh, right now there's an attack on health care and uh, an inability to have even a conversation about climate change and how that's affecting all of us. And uh, people are sick and tired of Washington not working, of Wall Street trying to take all of the profits and productivity that this American, um, the American workers are turning out. And, And people are seeing a commonality here. And the old tactics of dividing people through racism and sexism, people are starting to wise up and see that those really were bosses' tactics. And we have to come together as workers and stand up and use our power because we do have power. You know, when I start, first started talking about our union uh, withholding our service, the first question I got was, well, what are the pilots going to do? Well, that was maybe a sexist question. It was maybe um, an idea that um, only some workers have power or some workers have more power than others. And in a very short time, that question went away. And, um, you know, mad respect for um, my friends in the flight deck, and we coordinated a lot of work on this. But the reality is that flight attendants had enough power to shut the system down, and people started to realize that. And so workers have incredible power when they come together and exercise that power together. And in a time when that can also be recognized um, by the public as part of something for the public good, uh, we're in a good position to exercise that power as workers and fight for our country, fight for our democracy, fight for good health care, um, fight for uh, good green jobs with good um, labor protections and um, good jobs for people, not just green. 
um, we can really make some strides here and, and workers can flex their muscle to really fix what's wrong with this country. You know, I think um, just uh, the, the, the biggest uh, change I think that um, I think we're seeing in the in the union movement is uh, that union leaders like yourself are talking about issues that are not specific to your union members, the ones that are shared across the community. Um, and but with that said, we got two minutes left. So I want to hear also about uh, what's happening in terms of uh, of Frontier. This is uh, an airline which uh, seems to have like um, consistently underpaid its flight staff. Uh, what what's happening with just uh, about a minute and a half left here? What's happening on that front? Yeah, so Frontier, we were successful in getting a contract, and we were successful because Frontier flight attendants turned out a ninety nine percent strike vote. And uh, they were out there picketing and making it very clear that they were willing to make good on that strike vote. And we were able to negotiate a contract, the terms of which are not going to be released until later this week. But that will be life changing and dramatically uh, improve the pay, the working conditions um, and the benefits for Frontier flight attendants. And this is going to finally make Frontier pay when they have uh, pocketed massive profits off the flight attendants' backs for years based on a bankruptcy and an uh, inability to or um, a refusal to get to the table and negotiate terms that were competitive with the rest of the industry. So we just made them pay by flight attendants standing up and saying that they were willing to use their power together to fight back. We just have about 30 seconds left, but I'm curious, when you as a as a union leader when you have a successful um, a threat of a strike and it, and it turns out this successful, what, what does it do for the rest of the union in terms of like, you know, a loading for bear for the next fight? Well, look, you know, sometimes uh, you have to beat it out of them. Sometimes they have to just remember the beating they're going to take if they don't deal with you fairly. And what we find is that with power comes respect. So when we have been successful in uh, our strike action, uh, what we have seen is a respect that comes from management and an ability to work together um, better than ever before. And that's the result. When you uh, stand together and you use your power, you're going to get results and you're going to have them remember what happens if they step out of line. Sarah Nelson, thanks so much for your time today. I really appreciate it.